What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. Behind me I've got my strawberry beds and last year we had to replace our strawberry beds by pulling all the plants out because things had sunk so much, the soil had degraded to a point that was very difficult to work and manage and uh, the plants had become so dense that productivity had really come to almost a, a near standstill. So we decided to make the decision, though it was hard, to pull all the plants out and start fresh. So as you can see, the soil level is now up, the soil looks great, and basically we're now at the point where we need to be planting some new plants in its place. Now we do have a lot of seedlings that have actually sprung up uh, around the beds that we're actually gonna dig up and transplant, but I thought this would be a really good opportunity to show you all how to transplant uh, from bare root. Because a lot of you have ordered from us, as well as other seed companies, bare root strawberries. A lot of hardware stores and uh, garden supply places are carrying bare root plants this time of year. And a lot of you have asked me how to plant them. So when you order or go buy bare root plants, they're going to come as the name implies bare root. Basically they've taken the dormant plant and they've dug it up and washed all the soil off and it's just bare root. When you get your plants, you're gonna take them and the first thing you wanna do, the very, thing, the very first thing you wanna do is, you probably thought I was gonna talk about planting these. No. You wanna prep the space you're gonna plant them in. You wanna make sure that the soil is very loose. See, because these are bare root, the root system, though it's very mature and very large, it's not gonna take hold right away if the soil is not optimum. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the soil quality is as ideal as possible. So before you even order your berry plants, before you even receive them, prep the space. I kind of call it like nesting, you know, when, when a mom is getting ready to, uh, to give birth, uh, they, they do all this nesting stuff. They get the nursery ready, uh, at least Mrs. Emma Gardner did, and I, I hear it's pretty popular among women, but uh, so they get, the, they get the nursery all ready. You know, they make sure that the car seat's in the car and, and all this stuff is kind of ready to go to, uh, to bring this child into the world. And you need to get ready, you need to start nesting before your plants get there so that you have a place for them to go. As soon as you get them, you can get them in some, uh, get them in some really good soil to get them growing. And so the last thing I want you all to do is to get your plants and say, well, I don't even know where I'm gonna put them. <laughs> I don't have my beds ready, I don't have my soil ready. Heck, I don't even know where my garden's gonna be. Don't do that, it is a big mistake and it is a great way to make sure that your garden does not uh, go as well as you had planned. So, Make sure that the space is all prepped and ready. We use pure compost here in our garden, but make sure that the soil is at least loose, at least able to be, you know, you can stick your hand in it without breaking a finger and you can, uh, you can smell some nice fertility. Make sure there's a nice rich, uh, you know, a nice all-purpose fertilizer in there so that when these plants start growing, they can start growing quickly. Uh, because the biggest thing is because these are a perennial, Getting an established root system is the, you know, the best way to ensure success. It's the best way to ensure that next year they're going to fruit and flower very well for you. Uh, so that's what you want to do before you even get your plants. Once you've done that, you've got your plants, it's very important that we soak them. I've got here a big bucket of water and all we're going to do is we're simply going to take the plants and we're going to drop them in the water. You want to do that for about five minutes to really hydrate those roots. All right, so the plants have been soaking for about five minutes and they look way better than they did when I first put them in the water, much more hydrated. So they're ready to go into the soil. Now, the next thing you wanna do is when you put them in the soil, you wanna space them out about a foot apart. It's a very common mistake I see people making where they start with a small plant and they think because it's small that they need to crowd things together to make their garden not look so sparse. It's a very common mistake with most things in the garden. And uh, it's, you know, it's a mistake because plants don't stay small forever. You know, you plant a plant, it's there for two or three years, it's gonna be significantly larger in two or three years than it was when you first started it. On top of that, strawberries produce what's called runners. And runners can be the biggest gift or the biggest nightmare ever. Now for us, it was a gift initially, and then it became a nightmare once we couldn't keep up with it. So I always recommend starting with one bed letting that one bed fill out, then take the runners to start like a second bed. Now we are gonna be starting two beds, but we're also going to be much more frequent at uh, maintaining them. Uh, mistake learned. So um, yeah, you just wanna make sure that you do stay up on that because the runners will be basically identical plants and you clip them off, you can transplant them, heck, sell them at a farmer's market or give them away to a friend, uh, friend or family 
and uh, they certainly won't be complaining with plants. So, uh, you know, it's a really good way to multiply your plants, but uh, you want to space them out enough because when they, you know, when they fill out plus spread out, it can really become a, uh, a mess. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to space them out about a foot apart. Our beds are three feet wide, so we're going to get three, uh, basically three plants per row. And then we're going to get, uh, we have, our beds are 12 feet long, so we're going to get about 12 plants this way. So in a given bed, we should get about 36 plants. Okay, and it's really this simple. All we're going to do is we're going to take our shovel, stick it in the soil, just open up a open up a space here, take the roots and kind of just work them apart a little bit so they're not all crumpled together and put them in the hole. Now it's very important, I'll bring you guys in close for this. When you backfill, you do not want to backfill over the top of the crown. It's very, very important to remember this. This part right here, this part right here is called the crown and that cannot be buried below the soil otherwise uh, strawberries are very prone to what's called crown rot and crown rot is uh, the fastest way to kill your strawberry plant so we want to make sure that when we plant them they're you know at right at soil level at the bottom of the crown all right i'll bring you guys in close so i can show you what i'm talking about all right so as you can see here i've got my hole and i'm gonna make another one here so about a foot apart dig my hole I'm gonna take my plant I stick it in and then when I backfill kind of hard because I only have one hand when I backfill as you can see that crown is not buried and that way no crown rot very very simple Here's the other plant that I had planted. I'm just gonna backfill around the plant, press it in. Obviously I'm gonna water these all in, the soil's quite dry. I'm gonna water these all in once I get them transplanted. But as you can see, there's the crown, not buried. And one last final note to make is once you get your, once you get your plants planted, it's a very common thing that people want to, uh, they want to get fruit right away. And a lot of people ask, Am I going to get fruit the first year? Should I expect to get fruit the first year? The answer is do not expect to get fruit the first year. If, in, if, if your uh, strawberries do happen to fruit, you don't have to worry about pulling off the flowers. A lot of people say, oh, pull off the flowers. It helps conserve energy. They're totally fine. They can go ahead and flower. You might get one or two berries the first year, but don't expect it. Basically, this first year, they are getting established. After they get established, the next year, get your uh, get your bushel baskets ready because you're going to have a ton of fruit so i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you learned something new and uh, if you did enjoy make sure to throw a like up there subscribe if you're not yet already and uh, we got lots more gardening content coming out and so i hope you guys enjoyed hopefully you learned something new and as always this is luke from the mi gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home and we'll catch you all later see ya bye